Good evening and thank you for joining us on Y254 News Updates. And tonight we'll be talking about sexual violence. We try to see so far for people probably who have reported such cases, what has been done. We try to see what role can the church, um, what can the church do in making sure that we don't have cases of sexual violence? And joining us tonight to help us talk about this, we have Winnie Obure, who is a, who is a founder of Teen Seed and an activist. We also have Brenda Kemuto, who is going to be, who is a nurse. And she's also going to be talking to us today about sexual violence. You can be part of our conversation tonight by sharing your views and comments on our social media platform. That is on Y254 channel, hashtag Y254, Y News. And you can also reach me at Patricia Murioki. My name is Patricia Murioki, and let us begin our discussion for the night. Okay, so we, we've had very many issues um, in different places in the world. It's sexual violence is a global problem. And we've had people who have come and talked about their experiences as far as sexual violence is concerned. And we've had cases whereby maybe the problem has been, uh, the problem, someone has listened to the problem and we've seen a solution. But we also have cases whereby nothing is done at all. I would like first to bring you, uh, Winnie, as an activist, what is sexual violence and what does the Kenyan law define? What, are, what is entailed as uh, sexual violence? What do I do to you or what can someone do to me? And I'll call that sexual violence and I'll go report it. So sexual violence, first of all, thank you very much for having us on the show. You're welcome. Um, sexual violence um, is abuse of, of someone without mm -hmm. um, their consent, mm -hmm. you know. So it's literally um, um, needing to get sexual with them mm -hmm. without um, any form of agreement or consent. Mm -hmm. And it's usually not only physical, it is sometimes uh, psychological, which includes sexual harassment, mm -hmm. um, like incest, mm -hmm. um, intimate partner abuse mm -hmm. as oh. well okay yeah. uh so i would like to bring you in um uh, uh, brenda we've had these uh, in 2016 the uk came up with a with an hashtag whereby an hashtag called ask for angela uh we are in the me too uh hashtag that was really running during uh, in hollywood after we had very many cases of very senior people in hollywood feeling that they can they have the power and they have abused people we've had people have been abused probably when they were starting up their career as in acting what do you think we can do as kenya to make sure that we try to end sexual violence what do you think maybe you can even maybe suggest something to uh, tonight during the program which we can push and make sure that people adopt it to make sure that we end sexual violence in this country uh, for me i think how we can end the sexual violence mm -hmm. basically starts from childhood, mm -hmm. where parenting is involved. Uh. If you, Patricia, has a kid, uh, mm -hmm. you talk to your kid on when they have an issue, mm -hmm. when they feel threatened, mm -hmm. they have a way they can wink at you, mm -hmm. and you know they're not safe. Mm -hmm. you trans if it's learned throughout your fa through your family, mm -hmm. there's a way you'll save your kids, you yourself. Uh. Okay. And then maybe in school, the teachers can have uh, girls and boys mm -hmm clubs where they teach on science mm -hmm. that it can help save each other mm -hmm. maybe in school maybe for myself mm -hmm. i have friends i mean i'm in trouble mm -hmm. i can call them there's a word i can say mm -hmm. and they and know get to understand. They need, i need help mm -hmm. yeah. okay uh we would like you to talk about uh, teen seed what is teen seed all about okay so before i speak about teen seed mm -hmm. patricia is i just wanted to comment or add something into what maya has said mm -hmm is that I think for me, sexual violence in Kenya uh, should be a national disaster. Mm -hmm. Because we have a very high rates of sexual abuse and violence in this country, mm -hmm. and no action is being done, mm -hmm. like no action is being taken whatsoever. Mm -hmm. When you look at the cases that have been reported, for instance, at, at, uh, in our justice systems, mm -hmm. it takes a very long time before you get justice. Yes. So, you know, I'll even be, you know, the women and girls that I work with, sometimes are reluctant to report because mm -hmm. when you go to report cases at the police station, Nothing the police officer is laughing at you like, mm -hmm. oh, where we? Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So even the attitude of mm -hmm. the police who are receiving these cases mm -hmm. is an issue. Mm -hmm. And when they get to, um, let's say, to the, to the court, it takes a very long time. Even when they're doing investigations mm -hmm. and stuff, it's just endless, mm -hmm. right? So the frustrating way that of the our, process yeah mm -hmm. it's, it's really really crazy and i think for me that has to be hastened if mm -hmm. we need to fight and if we're really really um 
up to fighting sexual violence in this country. Mm -hmm. And also the, this issue of um, um, kangaroo courts, mm -hmm. like your child has been defiled or a woman has been raped and then you want to discuss it on Outside the side. The court. I mean, that's mm -hmm. a crime. Mm -hmm. You don't discuss issues of rape and defilement. You can't. Mm -hmm. So I think for me is once we strengthen our justice system mm -hmm. and say when you have been raped or defiled or you've gone through any form of sexual violence mm -hmm. that you can be able to get justice. Okay. Anyway, so Teen Seed Africa is, as you say, teen and seed is that we look at teenagers as seeds of greatness. Mm -hmm. And so we work with adolescents and young women on sexual reproductive health issues mm -hmm. and preventing uh, sexual gender-based violence. And okay. that is part of it, like she said, engaging the parents, engaging the community to just understand what is sexual violence mm -hmm. and try and come up with solutions. And one of the things we do is to do referrals, we do counseling. It's very important to do counseling for people who've gone through sexual violence. Okay. Because it's, it's too much for someone to hold, you know, whether it's harassment at workplace or it's abused by, you know, a relative. And mm -hmm. statistics show, by the way, that, um, you know, one in every three women have been abused, right? Very, yeah. And mostly by people that you know very well, mm -hmm. you know, relatives or neighbors or mm -hmm. something. So I think for me, um, even as teen seed, is to continue speaking to the girls about understanding themselves and speaking out and raising an alarm, mm -hmm. right? Okay. But also that the offices that are mandated mm -hmm. with the task of following up, investigating and protecting us mm -hmm. do their work. Okay. I mean, why should I be worried of walking at night along this uh, avenue because of you know, security issues okay. when, like, um, the other gender is not worried, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we, we are really going to get to that whereby the attention is shifted from the victim to the perpetrator. But yeah. I'd like us to talk about creating safe spaces. And I'd like to bring you, uh, Brenda, on these. How do we make sure that we create in safe spaces to make sure that for someone who has been sexually violated, they have a place where they can come, they can talk about their story without being judged, they can have someone who's going to take them through the recovery process. And as you talk about this, I would really like us to focus on men. Uh, because I feel the, the most people are very willing to share their stories. A woman is going to come out, a young lady will come and say and tell their mom, someone touched me in this way. Uh, my boss said certain things or my boss touched me or maybe I was going from the market and someone did. But men don't talk about it. For a man to come out and say that I have been raped is very difficult. So how do we create these spaces? And I would like us to put the men at the forefront on this. Brenda. Mm -hmm. Like what we're doing in Kibera mm -hmm. uh, with a lady by the name Pauline Juma Leslie. Mm -hmm. We are starting something, uh, it's a rescue center. Mm -hmm. It's called Rebirth of a Queen. Mm -hmm. We are basically oh, we've started with the ladies. Mm -hmm. We've started with the ladies. Mm -hmm. We get them, mm -hmm. the victims of both gender based violence and sexual violence. Mm -hmm. They talk their story without being judged. Mm -hmm. We help them through counseling. Mm -hmm. And apparently we have a man, we have a gender, mm -hmm. uh, the opposite gender, one man in the group. Mm -hmm. He has talked about his story. Mm -hmm. We're helping him walk the journey. Mm -hmm. You know, once we are together, mm -hmm. like the three of us, and I have an issue, mm -hmm. it's way much easier mm -hmm. walking the journey together, the three of us, mm -hmm. without, like, unlike me walking the journey alone. alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you have the rescue center, we don't basically do counseling the whole day, the whole night. Mm -hmm. We just try to integrate them back to the society because mm -hmm. most of them feel like the society does not like them, the society does not love them, they are abandoned. Mm -hmm. So we can have maybe people doing modeling, photography, catering, mm -hmm. small courses mm -hmm. that will just brighten up their days, they'll make them feel like if I do this for my society, mm -hmm. if I do this for my people, they mm -hmm. won't judge me. They mm -hmm. won't say she is a victim. They won't say he's a victim. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, for the victims who we have, the ones who we call them conquerors. I, I hear the word victims. Yeah, they're survivors. So they're I survivors. Don't they're conquerors. Mm -hmm. So for them, they apart from them speaking their story to us and those who are ready to help them, mm -hmm. their story helps get others who will talk to them and they'll be the ones who are helping them walk the journey. Mm -hmm. not, sp sis, not me and you, the ones who have started. Not me and you, Patricia, will be helping Winnie come out of the mm -hmm. trouble. Okay. We have someone else coming to help Winnie because you've, hel you've helped me, I'll help Winnie. Mm -hmm. Winnie will help somebody okay. else. Yeah. So we're trying to make it a network. Okay. So Winnie, you've really mentioned something that I had really intended to make sure that we talk about. We've had issues whereby when someone talks about, uh, I was raped, the first thing someone is going to say, why did you, how are you dressed? 
you find out it's the first question someone is going to ask you. What time was it? And it was at night. So we have issues whereby the attention is shifted from the victim that is a person who has, who has gone through the sexual violence and this person now, the, perp the perpetrator, is the person now, we don't even get to talk about them very much. You get to hear a young girl was found at night walking and he or she, like she was raped. And then for the guy, you get to hear very nice, like the, the, the adjectives that are used to describe the guy are so nice that you do. By the time you're thinking that this is a person who has raped someone, it's really take, it really takes you time because we paint the guy as a very nice person and then just put... put is a re uh, is we raped someone down there. And then when it comes to the woman, we start with what, how was she dressed? What street was she walking on and all that? So how do we make sure that the society, because it, we have also seen people in the society bring out such sentiments, how do we make sure now that the person who has committed the crime is apprehended and made sure we make sure that that is a person we get to follow? Yeah, uh, first I would like to say, um, and just so that we watch our language, mm -hmm. is that people who've gone through sexual violence are not victims, but they're survivors. Mm -hmm. I think that needs to be very clear. Mm -hmm. uh, because when you say victims, it you know, contributes to even stigmatizing mm -hmm. them more. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I would like to comment about is that the government has um, the, the role to make sure that all citizens are safe mm -hmm. and that if you are not safe you're mm -hmm. able to get a safe space mm -hmm. we have women and girls who are going through a lot of abuse and violence mm -hmm. but they do not even have a safe house to go to mm -hmm. when the government has you know they take our taxes every other day and instead of giving us safe houses they're giving us things that are, are not our priority okay so i think right now i'm telling you like in Nairobi, if you were trying to locate a safe house to take a survivor, mm -hmm. you're going to have a headache. Okay. I used to run a safe house myself in Kambio, and it closed down mm -hmm. because I didn't have uh, resources for it. It was mm -hmm. self-funded. Mm -hmm. So I think, in addition to what Brenda said, is that we need to ensure that the government um, has these safe houses and that they're fully equipped okay. and that the systems are working. Mm -hmm. Other than that, we'll just have women who are afraid of even reporting or coming out because you know you have to deal with your perpetrator mm -hmm. at home. You have to go back to your home. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about like justification for violence, for sexual violence, like what did you dress? Mm -hmm. What time was it? Where were you? That's mm -hmm. crap, mm -hmm. right? I mean, why should it be safe for a man to walk in the streets of Nairobi at 3 a.m. Mm -hmm. and not a woman? In my safe house and in the projects that we do, I've had a woman who is like 70 years old who yeah. was raped, right? I've had a child who is three years old that was raped. And mm -hmm. my friend Florence Kea runs a safe house as well mm -hmm. in Nairobi. And it's frustrating, you know. It's really crazy to see a child who's four years who was defiled by the father, you know. So you can't blame the dress code, right? Mm -hmm. And I've seen, I mean, with all uh, due respect, I mean, some people think that Muslims are well-dressed, mm -hmm. right? They put on everything yeah. and cover whatever yeah. except yeah. the eyes. Mm -hmm. But they're still raped yeah. and defiled. Is it the dress code? Mm -hmm. No. Okay, so I think these are excuses of getting to, you know, justify rape and defilement and sexual violence, which should not be tolerated. Mm -hmm. It's not about where you are and what time. Mm -hmm. It's the question of national security, mm -hmm. that I must be able to walk wherever, any time when I want to, mm -hmm. without feeling threatened, without feeling unsafe. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, and, and earlier on I said, that we have to look at sexual violence in this country as a national security issue. Okay. So then we go into it knowing that we are protecting our own, because women rights are human rights, right? Yes. But the other thing that I wanted to comment to lastly is uh, the question of men and boys. I think um, globally we have like 14% of women who've uh, gone through an, a, a form of sexual violence between the age of 15 and 19 years. Mm -hmm. And it's only 6% of men, mm -hmm. really. I mean, I'm not trying to say that men do not go through it, but I encourage, even in our programs, mm -hmm. that men and boys are part of this conversation. Yes. And for me to be able to achieve a violence-free country or, or society, if you like, is to try and push for gender equity, mm -hmm. all right, mm -hmm. and economic... Um, um, empowerment, okay. right? Economic okay. justice, because women sort of 
uh, go through violence more because they don't have the power and mm -hmm. control. Mm -hmm. And these are the things we're trying to fight so much so that the women can have uh, some sort of power, if it's financial, if it's war, if it's jobs and stuff, mm -hmm. so that we're equal. So ultimately, I think for me, is gender equity. Okay. So I would like, before, we, I would like us, you to talk about the process. That's, that is the steps of uh, when you maybe probably have been sexually violated, the mm -hmm. process of reporting, all that. But before we get to that, I would like to bring you in, Brenda. How now can the, uh, let's talk about support, whether it's family support, whether it's your friends, whether it's the people around you. How do we now, as a society, support someone who has gone through uh, sexual violence? What are some of the things that we should say to them? Uh, probably, how should we even deal with these people in terms of when they talk to us? What are some of the things that we're supposed to tell them? Because it's very difficult sometimes when you have to talk to someone and you've not uh, gone through. Uh, whatever it is that they're experiencing but maybe you could share with us what do you think as a society we could do to make sure that people who have gone through sexual violence feel our support and our love during that difficult time uh, I'll start with most people mm -hmm. most people don't like the word sorry mm -hmm. even if I have an issue I wouldn't like you to tell me sorry mm -hmm. sorry makes me cry more mm -hmm. so many people don't like the word sorry you just encourage them you tell them they'll go through it They'll fight it. You use good words to tell them how strong they are. Yeah, It's not a fate. It's not that it was written that someone will be raped. Huh? They have to understand that because they always have that question, why me? Why me? And day in, day out they live, why me? You see, we've said we shouldn't ask them of how they were dressed. What time was it? Those are the many questions we forget. Many people out here ask. Where were you? What time was it? How were you dressed? What were you doing on the other side? Yeah, there are people who are raped when coming out of the bar. Not that the bar is the one that caused them to get raped. They were having their own pleasure. They got that. Rape is like an accident. Accidents do happen. It was not planned for. So if you ask them what they were doing on the other side, they'll feel the guilt. I'll, g I'll get guilty of why did I come to the studio? Because the accident happened outside here. Yeah. yeah. I'll be like, why did I go to the studio? Mm -hmm. I'll be no guilty inside mm -hmm. myself. Okay. We don't need to make them guilty. We need them to fight the guilt in them. Mm -hmm. Because they're already fighting a guilt of being, like they've lost their virginity, they've lost their dignity. Mm -hmm. They're fighting that guilt already. Mm -hmm. So we don't need, we have to make them strong okay. to overcome the guilt. Okay. Then, there's this one pattern. We shouldn't uh, like let them be alone most of the time because most of the time when they're alone, they're like in a dark pit. Mm -hmm. They get to get flashbacks of what happened. They get to see, like, have memories, which torture them. Okay. Emotionally, physically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we would like to bring you on this. Um, we're running out of time, but I would like us, you to talk about briefly about the process. How now do I get? Uh, what is the process? What is the first step that I'm supposed to do if I am sexually violated? Who do I go to? What are the procedures that I need to follow? Well, so there are different ways of going about that. But I'll talk about the most common and what is uh, supposed to be done mm -hmm. in Kenya. Is that once you get violated sexually, the first thing is to make sure that you're safe. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what it is. Just make sure that wherever you are, mm -hmm. this person is not abusing you more, is not violating you more. Okay. When you get out of that space, is to make sure you access a, a medical facility that you can be able to be checked by a doctor. Mm -hmm. And because, for instance, if you're like raped today or right now, um, when you go to the hospital, they can get you medication that would prevent, for instance, HIV, with the call post-exposure prophylaxis. They get you uh, meds that will help prevent pregnancies, unwanted pregnancies and stuff and so once you get through the health uh, facility then you can run if home is not safe you can go to a safe house or a friend place or somewhere that you really think you're safe yourself and then after that then you can go to the legal one which is uh, to try and start the process but all this time you require counseling psychosocial support you require somebody to keep speaking to you so that you can be able to you know um, reconcile with yourself and get back to what you used to be. But I also want to bring us to um, the fact that we have a lot of sexual um, violence and abuse, if you like, on the internet. Mm -hmm. 
So for instance, you're on Facebook or Twitter, and you're doing whatever, and somebody is, is cyberbullying you or internet shaming you. And this happens a lot even with the apps and, uh, you know, online. There's a lot of abuse online, yeah. which I know right now is still um, not very easy to penetrate because there are not enough policies around um, internet abuse, sexual abuse. So for this case is to get to make sure you report it somewhere. Okay. I know once it's, record, uh, it's uh, reported, there's always going to be follow-up. It might take long, the way our justice system is kind of screwed right now. It might take long, but eventually I know we'll get justice. Also just to encourage everybody to report some of these cases because everyone is going through a form of... Um, sexual violence, you know, mostly women and girls. And that if you're able to, remember me too, right, the one you raised yes. earlier, is that people keep it to themselves because they oh, blame themselves. Because you start asking, oh, but what will they say? How will they react to it? They'll stigmatize, they'll discriminate, they do what? So I think just to make sure that everybody uh, gets to a level where when, when something has been reported, somebody says this happened to me, mm -hmm. is believe it, first oh, of all. Okay. Believe her. <laughs> because she, she's not crazy. She can't come out and start saying that she was uh, violated sexually when she wasn't, right? Mm -hmm. So I think for us, what we can do to encourage people, to encourage everyone, even within our families, our workplaces, is to believe someone and walk with them through these steps. Okay. If they need more counseling, if they need to, you know, like a lawyer pro bono and, and stuff, it's just to get to work with them and amplify some of these things. Mm -hmm. Because the perpetrators are right here we know them mm -hmm. they're in the community okay. so the only way we can stop them is to come out report get uh, help when you need it mm -hmm. and then you know keep supporting the people who've gone through um, this kind of violence sexual oh. violence okay yeah uh, Brenda, I would like you to share as you wind up uh, you've talked about the rebirth of a queen I think this is a very it's uh, number one the, the statement alone is very strong I would like you to share maybe for someone who is watching us tonight maybe they know someone who has gone through sexual violence or even as an individual he, uh, the person watching us today whether male or female they have gone through sexual violence if they need help how do they get to reach you so that they can probably get help from the center that you're coming up that, that you guys are starting uh, I will start with giving out my uh, page on Facebook mm -hmm. it's rebirth of a queen mm -hmm. Rising mm -hmm. to conquer love and love to conquer and lover. Okay, wow. Mm -hmm. We have a, that page. We we speaking out on people. Mm -hmm. We've started the journey. Yeah. Okay, uh, Winnie, for you, kindly also share your contacts. Maybe for someone who's watching us tonight and they like to reach you, how do they get to reach you? Because I'm very positive there's someone today who's probably journey or recovery process has been made easier. So kindly share your contacts with us tonight. So yeah, I mean, I'm on all social media platforms with the W I W N Y O B U R E. that's Winnie Obure. But I would want to like just say one thing as I close is that um, we need um, the judiciary, the, the government to really speed up cases of sexual violence Maybe in, in, in court cases. Yes, yes. Well, but we have police officers who, has, who have been trained like to deal with that. Maybe if you go there, there's counseling because that is the first place that you get to. Maybe we yeah. should have a sex crime unit in this country. We should have it like yesterday, mm -hmm. really. And, and you see like a lot of, lots of police uh, officers have been trained on gender issues being, you know, abused and whatever. But they keep being transferred all over the country. Yeah. So you can't keep track, right? Mm -hmm. So these gender desks are not working anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we need to, you know, figure out, and even including uh, a sexual violence unit in their training curriculum in Kiganjo, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so that we, they can come out of it understanding really what this means and, and, and also how to handle survivors of, of violence. Mm -hmm. And also lastly is to say that governments need to support the safe houses that are existing okay. because people are voluntarily giving this service out of love and they don't need to do it out of love when we're paying taxes when the government has a lot of money mm -hmm. when we are supposed to be taking care of our citizens mm -hmm. so women are Kenyans and girls are Kenyans we need them to be safe okay. we need safety now Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. I'm very sure we've been able to talk, uh, we've tried to at least tackle the basics of this. Uh, we're going to be having a detailed uh, conversation on sexual violence, so please stay on the lookout on Y254 uh, News that is on Health, uh, Health and Lifestyle Wednesday. That is all we have for you tonight on Y254 News. All I can say is that if you've gone through it, don't be scared. Speak up about it. There's always someone who's going to listen and who's going to help you. And if you're someone who's watching us tonight, if you find yourself in a space whereby you're living or you have a friend who has gone through sexual violence please be very supportive and be open and not judgmental thank you very much for joining us my name is patricia Mariuki. do have yourselves a very good night